This is the Sea Win 1260. Now, as you may know from our previous reviews, we are super happy with a 1600, but this is the 41 foot model. This has been around for a few years and is a proven blue water cruiser. So let's go and see what we think of this one. So as we start the tour of the 1260, let's see what Teresa had to say about the helm position. Here we are at the helm position of the Seawind uh, 1260. And I'm not gonna jump up because it's still a little bit damp from uh, the you know, overnight, it's nice and early in the morning, so it's still a little bit damp. However, uh, one thing that I really like about this boat is the helming positions. There's actually two. This is uh, a twin helmed catamaran. And one thing that I love is how protected they are, and yet they're not encroaching on the cockpit, but they're part of the cockpit. So you can actually change the backrest so that it is facing the other way, so that you can actually sit facing uh, the cockpit, facing aft. Uh, or you can obviously have it this way where you're facing forward. So this is, I believe, a, um, a glass uh, homing wheel bay. We asked the other day, this is glass, and this particular homing position doesn't have all your controls. All your controls and everything are at the other side with your winches and your lines and everything else. But uh, they're otherwise equal and you have fantastic, fantastic visibility from this position. Uh, really comfortable seats. Actually, no, I can sit on them now, they've, they've dried up. So really comfy seats here with a little footrest as well. And this is one feature that we really liked from the 1600 as well, the homing positions. So I can control some of the lines from here, otherwise I have to go to the other side of the boat. Um, but this is a fantastic uh, watch position. The other feature of the Sea Wind that we really, really like, the Sea Wind 1260, is these sliding windows in front of the helmet position. So the windows actually slide completely down, and therefore you reduce uh, that kind of double effect of having glass in front of glass in terms of your visibility. So that's a feature I really like. Fantastic. The easy view of the chart plotter and its rotating pod mean that no matter where you are in the boat, you can always see your charts. Similarly, this beautiful curved glass means that you've got fantastic view of your sails while underway. The raising and lowering windows at both helms mean that you can add ventilation to your helm position as well as reducing glare while underway. And of course, the ability to look at those charts from anywhere in the saloon make watch keeping easy. We are also pretty happy with the handrails in the roof of the cockpit to aid movement around the boat if the weather is rough. Now, as we move on to the side decks, these side decks are extraordinarily wide for a 41 foot boat. There is gonna be absolutely no problem in moving around there in a seaway. We would of course like to see flush mounted hatches, but there are handrails throughout. And so moving around the deck, if the weather is inclement, would be safe and easy to do. We are pretty happy with this. And while the lines being present on deck may not be to everybody's taste, it is a very easy way of checking for chafe on long passages. Now let's hear Teresa's thoughts on the day. A few things I really like about the outside features of this boat, I guess, is that it's really easy to get to the coach roof. It doesn't look like it's easy, but when you actually do it, it's simple. There's a shroud right there, I think, that you can use to hold on to, and then there's a step that is there purely for the purpose of getting up. And you know, it's not that high, so even someone who's short, like me, I'm five foot two, can get up there really easily. So I'm really happy with that great access to the coach roof and obviously a huge amount of space to put uh, your solar panels. They've also got this seating area right here and I think that's a really useful feature. I have to say that when you are on a catamaran, perhaps not this catamaran because the ventilation is so good, but generally speaking when you're at anchor you want to be forward so that you're catching all that nice cool breeze. Maybe not during the day when it's sunny and hot, but certainly in the evening that's the place you want to be in the forward part of the boat. Um, so to have a dedicated seating area that isn't like a full-on cockpit like say the leopards for example but it's just a nice little spot to sit and have a sundowner is uh, that's a thoughtful feature I like that a lot and with the life raft at the transom we are just going to dock the one point for the lines and the hatches so nine out of ten fantastic well done sea wind Category 2 sees us looking at engine access. The access on the 1260 is through a door in the stern. This means that you are going to be completely safe and protected if you need to do work in a seaway. Access for maintenance is fantastic and all the conduits are sealed. 
Well done, Seawind. As we move on to the standing rigging and the spars, these are all solidly well constructed. As you know, I like to have a good look at the gooseneck. This is a sturdy piece of kit. I don't have any qualms about this at all. One thing we do like about this 1260 is the amount of simple innovation we have seen. These recesses in the stern allow the dinghy to be placed and so it doesn't bump around too much. On our recent charter, we found a lot of movement in that dinghy and this will obviate that problem. A simple and elegant solution. We also found the sea wind to be full of very, very thoughtful little touches where the designer is obviously a sailor. This is going to be a bit nerdy, but look at these little spaces. They hold cables away from the bulkheads, thus reducing chaff. Simple but effective. Moving on to the fit and finish of the cabinetry and joinery. This was all really good quality. These foam cord panels are light. The catches are of good quality and the overall finish is excellent. It is not going to be up there with those high end boats, but it is still really, really good. Another little nerdy touch and bear with me on this is the drawers and shelves inside the cupboards. Now you're thinking, oh Nick, why are you discussing shelves? But just bear with me a second. These shelves are integrated. They are actually built in and made of fiberglass. This means that they are adding to the rigidity and the stiffness of the boat, reducing flexing and thus giving you a stiffer and faster boat. Fantastic concept. One thing to observe is that a lot of the superstructure for the furniture actually comes from the molding. Now, while this may not add to a massive degree of elegance, it does continue that theme of making everything stiff and light. Continuing the theme of simple innovation, the dining room table moves in three positions. It's on a gas strut. You can turn this whole area into a day bed and the modular furniture means that the footstool can become a day bed, can become a chaise long. Again, just simple and clever. So while the relative low cost of this boat means that you are never going to get the finish you get from boats that cost twice as much, the innovation means that we are happy to give this an 8 out of 10. Well done. And before we head on to the next section, here's 20 seconds of blatant advertising. As you know, we were at the Annapolis Boat Show and still have lots more reviews to show you. We also have a fairly amazing prize giveaway this week, so stay tuned to the end of the episode to find out how you can win a prize. You simply need to be subscribed, so click down there and you are good to go. Anyway, on with the show. Let's start this very important category by taking a look at one of the key features of the Seawind 1260, which is those trifold doors. Now, Jay here is showing us exactly how they lift the door up out of the way so that you are creating a large living space between the cockpit and the saloon. And I have to say that this is a feature that we really, really like. Obviously the same thing happens in reverse to bring the door back down and to fold it out to close off the two separate areas. This was a simple and we thought very elegant solution to try and maximize the amount of living space in what is at the end of the day a 41 foot catamaran. Looking at the cockpit itself, what we both really like about this cockpit is the fact that there is a lot of flexibility in the layout. We've already looked at those helm positions where you can change the backrest so you can look either forward or aft. The other really clever feature of the 1260 is that you have these storage boxes that usually are situated underneath the helming seats. However, you can actually move them around to provide footrests or stools to sit on in other parts of the cockpit. So that flexibility of space is something we really value. I've already mentioned the forward seating area just behind the trampolines and I speak from experience when I say that is actually a very comfortable lounging area. So the 1260, it's, there is a lot of innovation here and I do in many ways think that it would be pretty useful and I'm just doing the cockpit and we'll do the saloon in a bit if other manufacturers could take, uh, take a lesson from this. So we've seen these before, let them do this, these, uh, the helm seat kind of go forward and backwards. Cockpit space is of an, a premium here. Uh, so this I really like, the fact that you can sit back and then look back, you know, either when you're on passage or just if you're communicating with, you know, friends in the cockpit, I really like that. The integral sink and barbecue, I mean, you can tell that these boats have an Australian pedigree because it's, if you look at all Australian boats, I mean, obviously you're being Australian, like that, I really like. Uh, the hand holds, 
I think are fantastic. And we saw this on the 1600, this ability to kind of like move around and feel safe and secure in what is a really deep and enclosed cockpit. And something that you don't often see with catamarans is that the helms are on different levels. This is all one level. And it never really occurred to me until I got on here how important that's gonna be in a rough seaway. Um, the, you know, the more tripping hazard that you have, the more kind of like, the, the more the, the, the greater the risk you're putting yourself in. Um, I think what it's fair to say that one of the signature features of this of these sea, of this sea wind is this trifold door, which is clever and it's it's captured in the in the in the in the roof, uh, and you go from having essentially what is a secure saloon, which can be locked up, to this massive open plan area. I really like it. It's clever. It's a very very clever use of space. Um, so yeah, so a good seating area, table. It's uh, you can put flexi teak down here if you want something a little bit warmer. At the moment, it's it's just it's the white uh, molded fiberglass. It's a nice space. It's a nice space. The integrated davit system on the arch. Again, it's all very clever. I think you know you you can always style over substance is something that we've thrown around quite a lot. This is substance. There's a lot of substance to what they're doing here, uh, and I can see why this design's worked for the last you know x number of years. Let's talk about ventilation for a second. You know it's my favorite subject and there is plenty to talk about regarding ventilation on this boat. You can see those huge forward opening hatches and that combined with the sliding windows and the big trifold door means that the saloon and the cockpit are both very breezy, cool spaces. This is so important. I cannot overstate how important it is when you are living in tropical areas that you can capture that breeze and it goes through your living area, the places that you spend most of your time. Moving on, the modular nature of the furniture I think is really clever. We talked about this in the cockpit. It does allow you so much flexibility. The saloon is huge for the size of the boat. We're talking about a 41 foot catamaran, so we have a really large U-shaped saloon. I love that. What I would say is that the nav station is not particularly comprehensive. You know by now that we do value a good forward facing internal nav station. That's one area that is not perfect in this boat, although there is a nav station of sorts. Let's go down now into the galley. Now the galley is of course a galley down and we are going to discuss this in a little bit more detail at the end of the episode. However, for the moment I'm going to say that the galley down allows for a much larger and more comprehensive galley than if you were to position it up in this particular size range. So in my opinion, the galley down not only makes a huge amount of sense, but it also means that it is a much more practical space. This particular galley has everything that you would need. It's got a chest freezer, it's got fridges, cupboards, double sink, everything. I didn't quite get a clear shot of it, but one feature I did really like is the outward opening hatch in the galley, which you can see just on the far side of that frame there. Moving aft, there is a, I guess, a single berth uh, in the aft part of the guest hull, and that has good ventilation with a large opening hatch there, but you certainly wouldn't want uh, two large people in this cabin. It's definitely a single berth. Going forward, we'll now take a look at the main guest cabin. They have their own separate shower room there, forward, as you can see, and the berth is raised with an opening hatch above, which will give pretty good ventilation to that berth. Those large port lights will give you a really nice view while you are sipping your morning coffee in bed. All I would like to see is just a little bit of shelving in that guest cabin next to the berth. I think that would be quite handy. And there is a quick look at the little shower room for your guests as well. Let's now take a look at the master hull. Now, once again, the master berth is forward and raised. This is positioned athwart ship. The rationale for having one berth in one direction and the other in another is that no matter what the motion of the boat is like you're likely to find a comfortable bed somewhere on board so that is pretty sensible you've got your own shower room with a separate shower and good ventilation in that room as well so what are we going to award the 1260 in this category well we would like to see a little bit more storage space on the boat for the purposes of remote cruising and also the quality of the finish although it's fantastic it's not of the standard you would get on a boat two to three times the price we're going to give it a seven out of ten now 
now let's look at statistics for the Sea Wind 1260. She is a 41 foot catamaran. That is 12 meters 45 in metric. The beam is 22 feet and the draft three foot eight. So that's only 1.16 meters. Now let's look at displacement. This boat is light. She carries a large sail area, 69 square meters for that main, 24 for the jib and another 65 for the Jenica. With the fine bow profile, the low weight and the massive sail area, this boat is going to fly. She is really a performance boat. And despite the lack of dagger boards, you are gonna get excellent performance on this. We are happy to award the Sea Wind seven out of 10. Into the final category, and we are looking at value for money for the Sea Wind 1260. Now, the base price for the 1260 is 410,000 US dollars, that is 372,000 euros or 318,000 pounds. And as always, this involves currency conversions taken on the 1st of November and does not include local taxes. Now, talking to Jay at Seawind, the average additions add up to about 70,000 US dollars. So we are looking at a final price of 480,000 US dollars. That's 373,000 pounds or 436,000 euros. Now, to get a boat that will circumnavigate happily for under half a million, that to me is fantastic value for money. I have absolutely no problem in giving the Seawind a seven out of 10 for value for money. Well done. That was the very impressive Sea Wind 1260, and that is a review that I think we have been asked for more than any other review since the Exquisite came out. <laughs> you want two things you want the Exquisite and you want the 1260. Two quite different boats. Yeah, and they are very different, and I think comparative analysis is something that we are, we will probably end up talking about today in part. Anyway, the 1260, so thank you to Shane, thank you to Jay, and thank you to Richard and Kerry for taking the time over that weekend to show us uh, their beautiful boat. Mm. Um, in addition to that, there were a couple of manufacturers who actually had the time to take us test sailing. Um, so we will have a test sail of a 1260, and we've got a test sail of a Leopard as well that we've yeah. got to come out, so that's in subsequent videos. As per these reviews, as always, uh, any positives and then negatives. So, uh, Therese, let's start with the positives, my love. Yes. Well, I mean, I I just really love the 1260, and it's hard it's hard to separate kind of head from just an instinctual reaction when you step on board a boat that for some reason, and sometimes you can't even put your finger on it, really appeals to you. So I don't want to gush, I just want to kind of try and lay out why I like the 1260 so much. And I think part of it is actually the fact that, you know, at the Annapolis Boat Show, in fact, in every boat show, we go onto all these big boats, you know, like the Exquisite and the Nice and St. Francis, the Balance, and they're very impressive and you walk around and you go oh wow like this is awesome and there's a dishwasher and there's like you know it's huge and you just think for a moment oh this is how the other half live but those boats aren't really suitable to people like nick and myself and we've discussed this in previous episodes where these big 50 foot catamarans are very impressive but they're very expensive the cost of running them will be very expensive as well, but also they just seem like a little bit much for us. I mean, can I can't imagine us on a 50 foot like discovery or privilege. They're just not our style. The Sea Wind, I think we've already reviewed the 1600, which is the 50 foot version and we really loved it. But the 1260 is more kind of our type of boat yep. for many reasons. I think that we are minimalists we do prefer kind of a simple um simple systems and uh well, a simple way of life which is why we decided to do this whole sailing thing in the first place mm -hmm. and the 1260 is a boat for sailors who want just a, a practical um simple but very uh functional and um in a lot of ways very beautiful catamaran so there's lots of things about that boat that I think are very clever and, and 
practical. So one is um, the, the the cockpit and the saloon situation because it's not it's one of these rare catamarans that you almost can um, you can't even really separate the two areas because they become one big area so yep. easily and you would use them as one big area quite often I, I think. So that um, folding door uh, that you can kind of um, you can put up into the ceiling and it becomes one big spacious area I think is absolute genius and I don't know why more boats don't do that some boats try and do it I'm not going to compare the Seawind 1260 to the Bali but it's the only other boat that has that kind of indoor outdoor situation going um, the Bali is very different in so much as when the Bali's door is closed there is no outdoor area yeah. There's literally a, t a two to three foot platform. Yeah. So it's very, very different. Yeah. So just th that's the big difference. Um, apart from the fact that the Bali have a mechanical door and yes. when the door is down. But yeah. Yeah. And it, so if the mechanical, yeah. the me mechanics fail, then you can't. Open oh, there is a man the there's a manual override, but it's, okay. it's, the, the Bali door is more like a garage door. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and this is more like a folding door that happens yeah. to fold up oh, out the clever. way. It's very clever. And uh, and also the other thing that I really like is that even though it's only a 40, is it a 41, 41 point four. something um, catamaran, the, the uh, saloon area is really spacious. It's huge because you've got the galley down in, in the hull, which I'll come on to in just a moment. And part of that, part of the way that they've designed it is they've got these kind of modular, um, it's like a modular seating situation so you can actually move mm. some of the uh, benches and seating around to suit the circumstance which I think is is genius um, yeah okay <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> have I given away my magic talking pills <laughs> I've had a lot of coffee this morning <laughs> uh, okay yeah so a lot so there's a lot I want to try and cram into what I'm going to try and keep into under five minutes okay I love the boat. I absolutely love the boat. Um, this, the 1260 is a boat, and we said this about the Balance 526, it was designed by a sailor yes. for sailors. It's a real sailor's boat. Yeah. And I love that. And as such, you make compromises. You, can, yeah. you do make compromises. That boat, and we can. this will come in the next the video, which is a test sail video, it has very, very fine bow profiles, and the holes are quite narrow. Now that means that you can, in one of the berths, the berth is, you know, the, the aft berth is quite narrow, but you still get two full size double berths in it. Mm. But it goes fast. It's not, it, you know, she, she's, a, she's not, she's not daggerboarded in performance, but she's a nippy little girl. Yeah. She is nippy and mm. I like it. Mm. Um, so from that point of view, you can see, I can look from a sailing perspective and think, oh yeah, you know, there is so much in this that I'm like, that's clever, mm. that's clever. and. I am not wowed, and this is just personal, you know, don't, don't all berate me for this. I'm not wowed by a boat that has an iPad navigation system. It, does, it just doesn't do it for me. That's just personal. Um, but there are some things on the 1260 that I thought, jeez, that's clever. And it's simple things. Mm. Example, on one of the stanchions, there's a little, I, I noticed it and I said to them, what, why have you got a hook on one of the stanchions? Why is there like a, a hook? What's that hook for? And they said, oh, it's the breather pipe. For the fuel tank and we we built it into one of the stanchions mm. so that you wouldn't get any water ingress I'm like that's so genius. clever <laughs> genius that is so clever mm. the trifold door I think is a very very clever design the way that it locks down and it, you know because one of my thoughts is when that comes down on your head you're a goner it all locks down yeah. it can't come out and there are so many little things about that like you said the modular seating yeah um, you know that I think are fantastic yeah um, one thing you didn't cover which I'm gonna kind of pick you up on Ventilation. That well, boat. yeah. Hang on a minute. You had your chance, girl. <laughs> I genuinely think there is so much space in those windows. Mm. You could take a fully grown male sheep and drive a sheep through that window. I it's think massive. you put a cow through that window. It's huge. Yeah. Like ventilation. Like it, I, it, the, the only time we've ever seen anything. Uh, that size was the Catana 53. Yeah, a 53 foot catamaran. Yeah, the ventilation on that boat is insane. Yeah. Like, absolutely, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so and, and why more boats don't do that, I, I do not know. Because it costs money. Yeah. And that brings me on to my biggest selling point about this boat. Yeah. When we were in Annapolis, we met Lynn Pardy. Um, I mentioned this in the Balance 526 video. Lynn Pardy is an amazing woman. Her and her husband, Larry, sailed 200,000 miles in, um, I think it was in, started in the 60s, 
in 30 foot boats with no engines and she is like one of the original badass sailors and she was at Annapolis and we were talking about this and her mantra is go simple go small go now now yes it's a 41 foot boat yes it's fairly simple although you know you gen set you can have yes washing machine you can air have air conditioning you can have so it's mm. not that it's not that simple no go now like this boat fully loaded for circumnavigation is going to cost you under half a million bucks yeah under half a million mm. and i think the base price is like low 400s mm. and that base price comes with solar panels and any anyway yeah but you know go simple so really for half a million yeah and it has so many of the features that we want on it. Yeah. So really, um, so I messaged Lynn and I'm like, Lynn, you know, th you know, tell us more, you know, we are doing this uh, series. Like we really love the go simple, go, you know, go small, go now concept. She's like, yeah, well, it, we, it was our mantra for, you know, when we mm -hmm. were sailing. Uh, what she has done actually is she has given us a couple of copies of her book to give away. So yeah. thank you to Lynn. Um, they are amazing, amazing cruising guides, cruising manuals, they are up there with the books you should have if you are a serious sailor. Very inspirational. Um, so really, there's, there's uh, yeah, a copy of each of her books to give away, um, and we're just gonna give them to one of you. Um, to, if you want one of these books, just put a comment just in the, uh, down below. Uh, make sure you're subscribed, and in the next video, we will just, the comment that we like the most, we'll just uh, give those books away to you, they'll be shipped to you from somewhere in the US. So yeah, thank you to Lynn. And so yeah, so the go simple, go small, go now, we really love. Mm -hmm. And this boat fills that box. Yeah, and there is this um, strange perception. And I think, I don't know whether it's driven by the customer or by the manufacturers that, you know, people for some reason want slash need like a big catamaran, like a 50 foot catamaran. And I just do not see, I mean, sure there, there's, presumably many people who you know like and can afford these big luxurious uh kind of in my mind over the top catamarans but a lot of people i mean how much space do you need as you've said before most people are, are sailing as a couple so i mean well, different. as i said 95 percent of the people we see are couples absolutely so i mean you know i don't know how much space you need uh for me for us um you know the, the c1260 is uh, big enough that it feels spacious and very comfortable, but it's small enough to manage. It's certainly, um, in terms of budget, it's, you know, kind of sort of within our budget. And, uh, you know, it is something that I would consider, even if money were not an issue, which obviously it is, I would, my uh, preference would be a 1260 over you know, many of the other I know, big, but the big series cameras yeah. we've seen. And this, but this is why we throw those review scores out to the public, because it's we, exactly. you know, and we had is... a lot of bias towards the, 50, the Ultra 51, we love yes. that. We have some bias towards the Exquisite X5, because we love that. There's a lot of boats that we're like, oh, we really like that in this boat, so we haven't been so happy with. Mm. So this is why the, the review scores, we try and strip the bias out. To just, you know, wrap up the positives, mm. a 41 foot, blue water capable performance catamaran yeah. for under half a million fully loaded yeah no brainer yeah negatives come on baby let's get some negatives on this 1260 <laughs> there has to be some no there are there are there definitely are, some there negatives are. um okay so i want to talk about the galley first and oh. i actually um this to me isn't a negative but there is a lot of discussion about galley down and this was a discussion point in uh, for the Antares as well, because the Antares, um, to the best of my knowledge, is the only other uh, catamaran currently building galley down cats. So people get uh, really um, passionate passionate sorry about where the galley is, and perhaps it's because we come from a monohull, but I've never really understood why uh, people get. Um, very worked up and, and why the galley down becomes a red line for some people it because does. it does i know but but i don't but i don't really understand why because particularly in, in a bigger catamaran you know yeah it makes sense for the galley to be up of course but in a smaller catamaran like the 41 for like the 41 foot 1260 it makes perfect sense for the galley to be down because you can if you think about it by putting the galley up you're actually uh not a utilizing 
the space particularly well in the guest hull and b you're really compromising on the galley as well as the saloon because you're making both smaller um but you've you know obviously only got a limited amount of real estate up there so you're you're making compromise with both by having a galley down you can make the saloon bigger you can make the galley bigger and the galley is situated in a hull that is not your master hull you've got an entire hull to yourself is only only the guest hull and in the 1260 your forward guest cabin is pretty much unaffected by the galley anyway um, and because of the hull shape uh, really that galley would just be taking up space where they might put like a bit of storage or maybe a, a, a shower room or something so you have a bigger galley with opening hatches right there which I think is really important you have a huge saloon um, and I, I think that it's perfectly sensible but you have always been talking negatives remember this oh yeah so yeah, sorry. Hang, hang on a minute. sorry I was just just after saying that all I would say is that the, the criticism about the galley down which is everything that we get about galley down there were some really potent comments and really it's not for us to assess just because it's not for us doesn't mean that for some people the red line is not galley down yeah okay now, what people have said on the, on the previous reviews, and it was a, a lot to do with the Antares because that's the other galley down as well, yeah. there's no communication when people are, you know, if I'm trying to cook and we've got guests or I'm trying to cook, there's no communication. They're like, well, you know, we're at anchor, I don't want to be down there cooking and everyone's up here. What I would say about the 1260 is there's ice boxes in the, in the cockpit, there's a sink in the cockpit with a tap mm. and there's a barbecue there mm. and we spend so much time on barbecue so literally mm. you would not have to go down there now can we please deal with the negatives of this boat well i wanted to deal with that perceived negative but nonetheless can we deal with the <laughs> negatives of this boat Therese? okay so the main negative of the 1260 and it pains me to say this is that um i am a, a little bit concerned that for our purposes which is uh kind of long term remote cruising there may be not enough storage space uh, because there isn't as much storage space in the 1260 as there is in uh, other catamarans of well I guess the only other catamarans around that size are production cats and they're really designed for interior volume rather than um, performance so it's hard to compare the 1260 to any other boat but nonetheless storage is um, the main concern of mine yeah, and I, unfortunately, it's just the physics of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Here. You are building a 41 foot boat, so you're constrained by length. Mm. You are building a performance cat, so you're keeping the hulls narrow. Mm. So you, you lose the storage there. You are also putting the galley in one of the hulls, which is where all your storage is going to be. Mm. So you take up all the storage space that you would put, like if you bought a Lagoon 42, mm. that's got a horrendous amount of space in it mm. for all sorts of shenanigans, mm. but you know, you've got oodles of space in both holes you've got wider holes um, so you do lose some storage space mm. now we have just spent five years doing an Atlantic circuit right so we've you know we've done all the Caribbean islands we've done Puerto Rico we've done all of Europe we've done you know the Bahamas America the 1260 for that perfect yeah absolutely, absolutely. Perfect. it's got enough you know and when you say you know it's got oh we're not got enough space like you could put, the sail lockers are big enough for you to put a couple of three sails in, you know, it's coloured sails, spinnakers and yeah. co-zeros. Uh, you can get a washing machine on board. Yeah. You can get a generator on board. Yeah. And you, there is enough storage space for just for everything that we've yeah. had and we've got on Ruby Rose. If we took everything from Ruby Rose yeah. and put it into 1260, we would have enough. Like sure. easy. Yeah. It's, it's a no, it's a no brainer. Yeah. So we, that boat has more space than ours, but what we are planning on doing is something different yeah and as we know for our next boat and what we've said we want to go remote and we want to go far and we need a pantry and we want stuff where we can be away from like supermarkets for three four months mm. we've got and we are going to need a lot more kit than, yeah. than, than than we have at present to do that and yeah. one limitation of ruby rose is that while she's good for an atlantic circuit if you want to be anchored off the polynesian islands four months on end it you know you're going to want a bit more space yeah so the space thing yes um for what we want to do it's not quite big enough for what we've just done it would have been perfect yeah and uh, do you know what i wasn't even aware that this boat existed um when we ordered ruby rose and <laughs> to tell you the truth um i am a diet and a one-one-a-whole sailor and so you know I, I, it would never have happened but um 
the space thing is an issue for us. Um, Only for got, our specific plans. Yes. Yeah. But an amazing boat. Um, super and, happy with sorry, that. Sorry, and, and just on that, uh, lots of people, I mean, Sea Wind have a very, um, you know, enthusiastic and passionate owners community. Oh, yeah. And those 1260s do go around the world. People circumnavigate on the 1260 and the 1160 all the time. Yeah. So it's not that there's not enough space it's just that that is the limitation of the design yeah, so absolutely but it's the, as i said it's the physics yeah if you want a performance catamaran yeah you're going to get narrow holes if you want to if you want the space in the saloon and you put the, the galley in the hole you lose that story yeah, so it is really it's the compromise that you make for this boat absolutely so thank you for watching this video that was the sea wind 1260 now for those of you uh who have been watching this series we have uh, quite a few more videos from Annapolis coming out in addition to the ones we've already had out so far. So don't forget to subscribe. There's a little click box down there and we'll be back soon with another review video. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.